Hey guys, welcome to another whiskey review. My name is Andrew and like you, I am enthusiastic about whiskey and that's why we're here. Uh, myself and my friends, Brett, Greg, Bobby, um, Bill and Chad run this little YouTube channel and this nice little website called whiskeyenthusiast.com. Uh, just in order to share our hobby with you, our hobby of enjoying whiskey and really we're just a microcosm of a much larger group that uh, spends time together on Facebook called the Whiskey Bourbon and Scotch Enthusiasts and so that's who we are, that's why we're here. Uh, we want to share a drink with you all and maybe help some of you along the way like people before us have helped us to kind of navigate the turbulent waters that are the current whiskey market. So today, just a short review, we are looking at Kilhoman Mahir Bay. It is a peated whiskey on the western coast of the island of Isla. Uh, Kilhoman, I'll just talk briefly about it, is one of the newest distilleries in Scotland, just built in 2005, and it really prides itself on being what it calls a farm distillery, meaning that Literally, it owns its own farmland where it grows all of its own barley and everything from grain to glass happens on site at the distillery. Now this really makes it a rarity in the scotch industry. It is, to my knowledge, one of the only, if not the only, fully sufficient grain to glass distilleries. Uh, there are others that are close to that, like Springbank and Brooklady but they don't own their own farmland like Kilhoman does, which really sets it apart as far as independence goes. Besides that, they really market themselves uh, in, in what you could really just call a craft presentation. Nothing is chill filtered, nothing is colored, everything is bottled at a minimum of 46% ABV, which we love. So we'll get into this, and over the next few videos, we're not just gonna look at Kilhoman Machir Bay, but we're gonna look at it in um, the range of other peated Isla whiskeys that fall into the same age and price range. So we're also going to be taking a look at Ardbeg Tenure, at Lafroy Quarter Cask, and even though it's not quite the same price range or age, we'll also look at Lagavulin 16 year, and that way we can have a fuller understanding of where should I put my dollar towards as far as more entry level 40 to $60 peated Isle of Whiskeys go? So, first up, Kilhoman Machir Bay. Let's get right into the tasting. We'll go ahead and start with the nose. The nose is bright. It's phenolic, but it doesn't smell that young. You can see there's no age statement on this bottle. Kilhoman has only been around for 12 years. This is likely a five to seven year old whiskey. It's peat forward, but it's balanced. The peat here is kind of a nice uh, dichotomy of maritime saline notes and more drier, woodsy campfire smoke. That said, it doesn't dominate the dram. There's a nice bit of uh, kind of pastry dough, a little bit of lemon peel. Overall, it's a nice balance of peat and sweet. Let's see how it tastes. Really nice, soft mouthfeel, no alcohol burn. The palate is peppery, um, peppercorns, a little bit of smoked paprika. The kind of doughy note here isn't as confectionery. It's more along the lines of like a buttermilk biscuit type of dough. There's a little bit of saline. The peat comes through a bit more meaty, kind of like smoked fish. Overall, the palate 
is dense, but it's a little bit jumbled, a little bit disconcerted. Uh, those notes I described, they're not very clear, which is what I mean when I say jumbled. Uh, that said, still a nice palette. On the finish, it finally starts to show a little bit of its youthfulness. It's a little bit spirity on the finish. Um, lemon peel, sweet roll, uh, just flecks of leftover peat on the finish. Not a whole lot of peat carries over, but you still get uh, just a little bit more of those maritime, salty, saline type notes. A little bit of almost like gin-like botanicals, which really come from the new make spirit. Uh, things like coriander, lemon peel, those brighter, um, more herbal, fruitier notes. Overall, this is a good whiskey. It betrays its youth just a little on the finish. The nose is really the highlight. Uh, I'll go ahead and score it. Remember, we use a 100 point scale, uh, a true 100 point scale that is, which is to say these numbers are not um, reminiscent of like a letter grade, like an A or a B or whatever. But uh, it'd be like if 55 is exactly average, so 60 to 69 is an above average whiskey, 70 to 79 is a solid whiskey, 80 to 89 is excellent, 90 or above, truly exceptional. I'm going to give this a 79 out of 100, which is just to say this is a solid sipping whiskey. Uh, it's a little bit too young, I think, to really cross into that excellent range, but you can taste the craftsmanship craftsmanship. You can taste the quality. I really do like this bottle. I'm going to enjoy the rest of it. Uh, we'll see how it compares to its Isle of Brethren. Uh, bottles that are far from grain to glass. Some of them far from craft presented, but that, you know, it has to compete against. It's a free market of whiskey. There's lots available. And as much as you want to root for a distillery like Kilhoman, we're still going to judge the whiskey by what's in the bottle. This is a great effort by a young distillery. Uh, I look forward to trying more bottlings in the future. Hopefully as they get older and their operation expands a little bit more, those prices will go down a little bit. This does sit on the high side of what I would like to spend on an entry level Isla. I think this bottle was close to $60. That said, that's all I've got. Hope you all have a great night. We'll be back probably in just a couple days to look at the Ardbeg 10-year-old. Uh, until then, uh, cheers.